Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Radio Tony Everyday Business. I'm going to start the day with something I've been meaning to do for a long time, and that's Australia's welcome to country. And it's a little statement that goes like this. I'd like to pay my respects to wherever this transmission is going out, to all the Indigenous elders past present and future and I want to make that part of our everyday business show from now on. Now thank you for being patient today once again we've had some little technical issues and I was saying to our wonderful guests that we have not had technical issues quite like we've had in the last week in a long time so something's happening out there in the world. Uh, Welcome to everyone listening across the planet especially a big hello to you in Russia and Germany and those who are listening live in the USA. This is the Everyday Business Show. It's streaming live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, and everywhere else. And Payo is listening live in the Philippines to answer all your questions and provide links and information to anything we talk about on the show today. Now, we have a wonderful guest with us today. And as you know, I have a particular love for talking to our artistic and creative humans across the planet and Patrick is no different. Uh, He is a visual artist who was born in Sydney in 1973 and grew up in Hunters Hill. He has been making art ever since he can remember. Uh, Drawing the Hunters Hill post office when he was just 13 and built in 1891. It was designed by a government architect by the name of Walter Liberty Vernon in the Apple, uh, Apple, (laughs) in the Queen Anne style. Patrick graduated from Canberra School of Art, Australian National University in 1996, and he enjoyed a working enriching working experience as a student exchange recipient at the Ecole Nationale Supérieure des Beaux Artistes for five months in 1995 and 1996. Um, Patrick suffered from a mental health problem after being hospitalised in the south of France and now Patrick has largely overcome that health issue and he draws in pastels or Conte paints in oil colours and occasionally in watercolours. Patrick has shown his artworks in seven solo shows and 48 group exhibitions as far west as Kingston in the ACT and as far north as Piamble in New South Wales, as far east as Bronte and as far south as Acton in the Australian Capital Territory. As a member of the Blue Mountains Community Arts Network, Patrick was invited to exhibit his painting Macquarie Road and he has done that in the uh, Blue Mountains Community Art Centre. Patrick adores to draw sitters, portraits in pastel and conte, generally from JPEGs. And when we say JPEGs, I'm going to ask Patrick about that later in the interview by adding a background image from his favourite holiday snaps. Conte, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'll check with Patrick in a minute, is a hard, waxy stick like a crayon, and it is virtually indelible once it's applied to fine art paper. Patrick only uses archival quality uh, materials throughout his practice and he is also registered as a New South Wales eco-aware artist. Now there's lots more that I can tell you about Patrick but I'd really like to get on with our interview today because I've been dying to talk to Patrick about a whole range of things. Now our first question today relates to uh, his uh, Youth Propose 2008 oil on canvas painting which I'm going to share my screen and show you in just a moment. So Patrick I know that you're a gifted artist and you're interested mostly in the art of Conte or as we described before, the wax crayon drawings. And together with a background image from your favourite holiday snap, you create these amazing 
paintings. So you've yes. studied at Enzibar in Paris for five months over the winter of 2000 and... Sorry, pardon me? Inspa. 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 In yeah. 1995 yeah. and 1996. What was that like? Ah, well, um, it was an incredible time for me. Um, so I'm just going to talk uh, briefly about the painting, the oil painting. Although this, this oil yes. painting was painted in 2008, it was originally from my Neem series, started in 1997. Part uh -huh. of the painting was using the Grisal technique. Uh, yes. It's technically the Missensan series, and I also include this in my later series, which began in 2009. Uh -huh. uh, I was accepted as a student exchange participant at Enspa, an art school in Paris in France. This was a fantastic time for me during that winter. Although my French wasn't good enough to attend classes, I spent my days in the painting department, also visiting the morphology department that had numerous skeletal specimens of, of creatures like pumas and zebras. Um, oh, wow. Yes. So whilst on holidays from Enspa, I travelled to Nîmes in the south of France, where you can still see the striking statue of the bullfighter that features in this in the centre of this artwork. Um, a young woman, uh, American woman, has cheekily posed for a photo with her hand on his bottom, whilst a <laughs> <laughs> two groups of youths engage in a psychological fight over aspects of my soul. To illustrate this battle, I've appropriated images from the Star Wars films, including Boba Fett as seen on the left-hand side, and Django Fett seen on the right-hand side. Um, ah. mm. So let so me that's just Boba grab Fett that one holding up. the gun, the, the rifle, uh, the, the blaster. Oh, sorry, wrong one, this one. There we go. The previous one. Yeah. Fantastic. Can we maybe zoom Patrick. in a bit um, I will attempt to. Mm -hmm. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, much better. Yeah. There yeah. we go. How beautiful are those colours, Patrick? Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I the there's specific... such... You go. Oh, I was just going to say, the, the, the yellows there are quite sort of reminiscent of the beach, so it kind of ties in the Australian and the French sort of background that I've got there. So uh -huh. that's kind of curious. And then we've got this, she's sort of standing in the, like a cloud of blast from the, one of the stormtroopers, yes. which is taken yes. from A New Hope, Star Wars A New Hope. As you can see the two stormtroopers on the right. And that's just in the scene where Leia and Luke cross the chasm with um, yes. Luke buys the bolts and they, and they've got the, with the grappling hook, yeah. Fantastic. When you look at it closely, like uh, when I was looking um, last week at your paintings, um, not only are they beautiful, but there's an incredible amount of a depth and detail within the painting itself. How long, Patrick, does it take to create a masterpiece like this? Um, well, that one probably took, because I only work on it, um, in bits and pieces, in dribs and drabs, it probably took about yes. um, about a month, I would say, um, but but maybe all yes. up, I don't know, 70 hours, just guessing here, but yeah. yeah. So I don't work on it full time, I work on it when I have time, um, so. Yes. Um, but then. It's very yeah, beautiful. So, thank you very much. So, yeah. Patrick, since drawing Niel, um, as Neil, playing yep. a Saint Neil as playing a Shakespearean character in Dead Poets Society in 2003 in Conte on paper, you've produced numerous actor uh, portraits from television and screen, and you do these mm -hmm. portraits again. You start with a JPEG or a photo. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. Um... Uh, so I used to simply pause the DVD at a particular point of the actor's performance. Yeah. So straight from yeah. the TV screen. Uh, at the point that struck a chord with me, then I would draw what was on the screen. Um, however, uh -huh. in the streaming age, I often take a screen capture of the image, so turn it into a JPEG, in effect, 
And, yeah. and then I might adjust slightly using my Photoshop Express app and then draw the resulting image from the iPad or iPhone screen. So, yeah, let me just yeah, make this a little bit the, bigger for us. Mm, that's one of the... Um, How's that? Look at the colour. Mm, Look you. at that beautiful colour in there. Mm. Um, Patrick, why do particular uh, actors or actresses capture mm. your imagination? I, I think probably because not only do I like their performance and I think they're a great actor or actress, also because mm -hmm. I think um, something about that scene reveals something about them and that resonates in me. Um, it's yes. really just as simple as that. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, and also the composition because my work is very much driven yes. by composing the composition and in this image, it, 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 it's a little bit unbalanced towards the left, um, but yes. that kind of makes her stillness uh, balances on the left, um, balances the yes. action and the movement on the right. So that yes, um, Conte and pastel drawing of Robin Tunney was paused from the 1980s comedy drama Empire Records. So it re represents ah. her with her hand frozen, place, placing an album on the shelf so her left hand is blurred and distorted. Uh -huh. And my viewers have agreed with me, with my statement, that she looks a little bit like a female Buddhist monk. Her close-cropped yes. hair yeah, mirrors, that, mir 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 mirrors that of a, of a figure in a large-scale stretch drawing from my equine behaviour series that was sold in 2010. So mm. as you said, Conte is a hard, waxy substance and it's sold in pieces like thin pastels. And so once a uh -huh. mark is layered upon the drawing, it becomes very difficult to remove it. So therefore, it's an unforgiving drawing medium. Ah, but it does mean that the you can create something that is going to be uh, have longevity. Like once it's on that fine art, that particular cool. line or brush stroke, or it, it's not going to move anywhere, is it? Well, yes, and 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 also uh, you can you can apply other colours over the top of it, and it will mix slightly. Yes. So you can see on yeah. her cheek the very pale pink. Now that pink's yes. probably made up of um, a little bit of yellow, a little bit more red, and a tiny bit of brown pastel. Yes. Mm. So yeah, it's very, really lovely. But mainly, mainly, mainly red. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it can allow for quite subtle sort of because you can draw a really thin line with it. It allows for very mm -hmm. um, subtle application. You can make a thick, heavy yeah. line. Or a smooth, like you use the, the flat of the, the Conte, like you do with pastels, yes. and make a very smooth line with it, or you can make a very fine, light line with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Patrick, the next image we have to share with the audience, can you tell us about that one? So, the second image utilizes uh, the second method, um, whereby I do a, a screen capture of it. And so, I've yes. actually of the hues on the right hand side of our tea tree, Jack Sparrow, whilst draining all colour from the image to the left of our famously popular character from Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Mm. So in this artwork, mm. he's watching a gourd slide down the bamboo pole that he's using as a balance. So if you ah. keep that in mind, it actually explains what's going on. So the viewpoint is actually very high over his shoulders and he's got his head raised yes. backwards and yes. looking at the the um the gourd or the fruit sliding down the pole another beautiful artwork patrick i love mm. the colors uh in his um head scarf and the watch in the top uh right hand corner does that signify mm. anything i don't think it's actually a watch good question i don't actually think it's actually ah. a, watch, but a little talisman um from the yes. caribbean sort of period dress uh, like they would have worn things like that probably as a good luck talisman yes. or something that they stole or whatever it was. So I think that's just part of his costume. But it it it, it, it could mm -hmm. I mean it could be a watch, but I don't think I don't think it is. <laughs> I think it's a bit of jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Again, actually, beautiful colours. Thank you. And and actually, I think he's got little ringlets on his braids, but you can't see them unfortunately in this. They're sort of towards oh, the end of his yes. hand. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes. Very good. Yeah, we, we work, yeah. okay. 
<laughs> Patrick, you had an interest in uh, creating drawings and then oil paintings of and mm-hmm. about horses. Um, why do you love horses? Um, so when I was 16 years old, I read the play Equus by Peter Schaefer, written in the year ah. of my birth, um, 1973. So it describes using ab reaction, um, how a 17 year old boy blinds six horses. Uh, but I have used the play's title to describe a collective and spiritual being that links the souls of horses. So if we look at this, this, um, print and drawing on stretch cast and paper, yes. um, the unseen heart of Zagreus, it utilizes the ancient Greek myth that is Zeus impregnates Persephone. Hades yes. entrusts a few curates, curates to entertain Zagreus the baby, which they do, but um, ah. they soon fall asleep. Um, their enemies, the Titans, lure Zagreus away with the following, a cone, a bull roarer, golden apples, a mirror, a knuckle bone, and a tuft of wool, all are present in my drawing. As they you can are. see. <laughs> hmm. So yes. Zagreus... <laughs> I can see. To, yeah. Tries to, um, uh, Zagreus tries to escape them by assuming several forms before they tear his, they, they tear, they tore apart his bovine form, so he's turned into a bull. Oh. So then Athena stops them, but all that is left is his heart. She places it in a gypsum figure, which is a sort of white um, clay um, material, yes. and she brings life yes. into it and makes him immortal. So I've placed oh. groups of horses around the outside of this drawn in willow charcoal. They enact various forms of dominance and submission, which is reflected in the monoprinted eye bar diagram. Zagreus' heart is depicted in the center, melded with a bull's head, and as I call it, a composite symbol. Um, wow. So, yeah, I sort of played around with that sort of that composite symbol um, at the time mm-hmm. then. Yeah. Yes. Patrick, can I ask for those in the audience that are not familiar with the tools of um, artists, what is willow yes. charcoal and why do you use choose that medium over something else? Does it um, have a um, – is it softer than normal charcoal or is it just a preference? Well, it actually it, – it's, it's actually quite brittle. It comes in like little stick forms and even though it's yes. quite brittle um, – it's very delicate and you can actually, again, get very delicate lines with it. Um, just yes. using the edge of it, like it comes in a, in a thin stick form. Um, or you can, you can sort of push a bit mm-hmm. harder and get sort of like a, uh, a line that's about uh, maybe yes. one sixth of an inch or you know, four millimeters. Um, so it's very versatile. And mm-hmm. it's very sensitive. More to the point, it's very sensitive to the touch. So if you want to make a very fine line, you can make it as fine as a human hair with the word charcoal. So that's wow. why I use it in that wow. drawing. And it can be very expressive too. You, it, you know, you can use, you can make yes. very expressive lines. Yeah. Um, so, um, so we're now, going to go on to the third slide. Hmm. We've so. The third slide I've actually got up at the moment is um, your oil painting. So we're moving Mm. through um, the types of uh, materials that you use to create your artwork, and this one is done in oils. Now, why Mm. oils, Patrick? And you can tell Um, very clearly that it's a different medium, can't you? Exactly. And it being a painting medium, the application is completely different, as one would expect. But also... I actually didn't paint with oil, to be honest. I didn't paint with oils until yes. I started. But before that, I used to paint a lot with with watercolours. So it was only a natural progression ah. for me to use a lot of glazes. So mm-hmm. so this um, oil painting is from um, 1996, and it's called The Plane of Innocence. So as we can yes. see, I've begun to use glazes in thin oil paint, but I've not used a light purple or blue grisal which is just basically the base mm. layer of, um, yeah. of the painting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like my later paintings from the Miss and Scene series or my current Bowie slash Brassfort series. So you can ah. see that 
this is painted probably i've probably um used um tape to divide the uh masking tape to divide the yes painting into three mm -hmm. sections and then probably painted yes. like a light brown on the left a very dark almost black blue in the middle and then mm -hmm. that um that reddish orange on the right yes is probably yes. what i painted the whole thing with and then painted the horse's head over the top and then progressively oh. made up layers of blazers but the thing with a lot of people don't like all colors because you have to wait oh, probably about yes. at least half a day for the glaze to dry them to dry so, mm. yeah so there's only a limited amount of painting that you can do each day so that's why people tend to right. um you work on different things a day um, different paintings in one, one in one go, but I when I was working at art school, painting was only on um, Tuesday nights, so yes, I generally that was always, okay. Yeah, the glazes to dry. Yeah. Ah, it's again mm. a lot, another stunning um, piece of work, Patrick. Um, okay. There are three main streams of your profession and uh, practice, and mm. that's portraiture, oil paintings, and drawings. Um, how do they relate to your current series, the Bashford series and the Equine Behavioural series? Ross, what? Just and Equine Behavioural series? Yeah. 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 Um, so which, which image are we going to look at first? This one that shows the mock-up and then the, the final, which I just oh, yeah. love this slide, actually. Yeah. Thank you. So the background image for both of these slides was taken with my mobile mm. phone near Wentworth Falls in the beautiful Blue Mountains where I live. At the top of this cliff oh. about 150 years ago, an Irish immigrant, Peter Mulleran, built a house that became a pub, which was later moved closer to Wentworth Falls train station. His sign can be seen right. in the lower section. Um, right a, there. A, a, mm, right there. Spot on. Mm. So um, a partially abstracted nude, abstracted nude man is lounging on his back Eyes obscured by a black rectangle. Uh, the Italian actress right Isabella Rossellini. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Uh, he hovers above him, adjusting her garter. Abstract ribbons of paint festoon the space behind our heroine. Yes. So, the reason people to ask me why has he got that that rectangle on his face? Well, I, I've kind of thought about this artwork and maybe it's <laughs> meaning. And its meaning is actually open to interpretation, yes. like a lot of mine. Um, but if you ask a woman to describe the face of uh, a man she finds attractive, they're all going to be different. However, the body's probably yeah. going to be pretty similar. So really this is yes. a painting about like the ultimate sort of uh, uh, man for a woman and pretty much Isabella Rossellini probably scores pretty highly in the eyes of most most. Um, uh, yes. Film going, I guess I would say. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's definitely probably, yeah. catering. To, and now I can clearly, guys. I can you can clearly see that how you started with the actual photograph and how it's morphed mm -hmm. into the beautiful creation um, on the right hand side of the screen and how you've used the photograph as a basis for the direction of your artwork. Um, exactly. You do that quite a lot, don't you, Patrick? Yes. So um, I do use photograph a lot, especially these days. So uh, mm. you can see in the final um, oil painting, of the cerise yes. oil painting, but the native plants on the cliff face have a greater variety of hues, excuse uh -huh. me, and the lighter, more pastel tones, and lighter, more pastel yes. tones. So the waterfall shown below Rossellini is cobalt blue, whereas in the original yep. uh, mock-up, black and white. Um, and a blue has been added to one ribbon, and mm -hmm. greens have been added. Um, oh, yes. Around. Yeah, on the bottom towards the man and also near Isabella Rossellini yeah. there as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So as as with the previous drawings, we can see that there is a reliance on symbolism and figures, both nude and clothed, mm. equine and human, to poetically yeah. describe differences in stories. Not only this, but I also describe similarities between themes in my portraits or paintings and drawings. Mm-hmm. 
Patrick, do you always follow um, themes of um, people, horses, etc.? Is that part of what you like to do? I think that's probably it's probably um, a bit of a hangover from when I did read that play, and I pretty much went through a high throughout yeah. high school. I was pretty much obsessed with horses, and that would be my. Yeah um sort of focus i guess um and my yeah. both my my major artworks for the hsc were about horses so um yes. i think it's, it's it's sort of a residue of of that um of that um concentration of my energies yeah mm. but i'm also um, very Patrick... much drawn to the news and and human figures yes yeah, yes unfortunately Yes, because mm. they're all very unique, aren't they? All very different. Hmm. And yeah, as I, as, as um, I said, yeah. go ahead. You describe yourself as a postmodern surrealist. Can you explain what a postmodern surrealist is? I can. Um, so even though <laughs> postmodernism began around 1917, um, as a uh, as an architectural um, movement, it transformed into an appropriation of architectural styles. So, in a sense, there is a parallel between the rise of Romanticism in the nineteenth century, the period in which Wentworth Falls, indeed the whole of the Blue Mountains, was settled and divided by mm. white immigrants into places like housing estates, like Brassfort, um, as it was once known. In that that Brassfort means strong arm yes. in French, that's all it means. So there's yes. a combination of postmodernism in art in America and in quietly working artists like John Bowman use romance and irony in equal measure in the 1990s. Um, so I could hope that some of this romance can be seen in the left and centre panels of my large drawing that we can see on the screen. Yeah. Uh, that's drawn on stretched stretch Canson paper, Three Modern Martyrs, depicting a beautiful statue of the Buddha carved out of a cliff and destroyed by the Taliban or the hide of fire oh, in his no. center panel. Hmm. So that's in that center panel depicts Fala as is his height yes. shown in the um, Museum of Victoria, you know, the National Museum in yes. Victoria. Um, uh -huh. so, um, so surely there's an irony in the reproduction of a 19th century French painting of Jesus in the right hand panel. And then it yeah. kind of refers to a obscure um, science fiction novel that I really liked. Um, but people can sort of look that up if they want to. So perhaps yeah. frontal representation of the human figure with a strong light from one side as championed by Edouard Manet can be seen in my draftsmanship because that's what his focus was. It was yeah. depicting the human figure in paintings from the front, which hadn't really been done very much previously to the menu. So if ah. we move on to the next uh, Next one, which is, which is Ferguson, Ferguson Road. Road. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Every mm -hmm. time I see it, yep. I think it's beautiful, Patrick. It's Thank cool. you. I really we, like it a little bit, please? Thanks. I've been trying to zoom in. Oh, there we go. Finally, there we go. That's better. How's that? So, uh, excellent. Thank you. So, certainly the seated female figure in my small oil painting, smaller oil painting, Ferguson Road, emulates Manet's Olympia, um, given that she's a reclining figure. Like the Italian modernist painter, Giorgio de Chirico, many of my artworks from my Missing Scene series utilise street, street state sorry, streetscapes, sections of maps, or in this case, the illustration of Uber Roy, so he can be seen in the yes. top left-hand corner, um, from, and he's from the Dada play of the same title, Uber Roy. Dada is, of oh. course, also known as an art movement prior to the European Surrealist art movement. So, indeed, one of my favourite artists, Francis Picabia, is known for his paintings that represent the female figure in unusual poses. His early mm. artworks tend towards the cubist and his later artworks have a kind of preoccupation with the pinup, a photographic sensibility of the nude figure. This can be also oh. said of my nudes in the masterpiece Macquarie Road. 
while ah, you're putting And up. here's Macquarie Road. And the rest of the title is Macquarie Road. Why should you be different from other men? And I'm told that there is hardly a husband in London who does not waste his life over some shameful passion. Which, of course, is a <laughs> quote from Oscar Wilde. And the importance uh, of yes. being earnest. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes. So, oh, I'll just catch up with myself. Um, the mock up that I constructed, which you can see now, is constructed mm. out of 27 layers of photographs, also depicts the actress <gasps> Britt Eklund mm. from the Hammer Horror yeah. film The Wicker Man. I have consciously retained the horizontal cathode rays that make up her face, effectively quoting video mm -hmm. modes of representation. This mock-up shows, in addition, the lilac blue colour that I painted as an underpainting grisal layer, much like Leonardo da Vinci and Rubens would have used. Yes. So the plastic bag of citrus plant food seen in the final slide today in the finished artwork retains or remains painted in this lovely lilac blue. Whoops. But it's a, mono <laughs> it's a monochrome layer. Keep that in mind. So if we just zoom up a little bit when you're ready. Um, thanks, Tony. So um, this huge... There we go. I think also... I've got it. Yeah, that's good. So this, this um, hue or colour can also be discerned in the oval shape um, derived from a photo of a plate of bananas that was manipulated using a difference cloud command on Photoshop visible just behind our three nude swimmers, which Tony has... Very helpfully shown in the centre. Can, yeah. can you see it, people? I'm just mm. so that's there that kind go. of watery, yeah. That's that watery oval shape behind the swimmers. Um, yeah. So that had actually originally started out life as a simple photograph of a, a metal plate with bananas on it, and then wow. when, I, when I selected that and pressed difference cloud, and then I kept pressing the difference cloud button, and it would distort, mm -hmm. slightly distort the image and it came up with a very kind of like wishy-washy um, blue, yes. light blue um, yes. tones and a little bit of pink in there, a little touch of green, yeah, which kind of draws colours from the rest of the painting in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that you can see the elements of an original landscape a landscape photo yep. in the background mm. as well. And actually, if you and go it's a lovely to lovely combination, mm. Mm. if you go to the um, Braemar Gallery to see my exhibition at the end of the year, well, that I'm, I'm featuring, yes. that is the front of that gallery. Yes. There's signboards on the left, so it's oh, just on a thin, yeah. amazing, amazing. Mm. Yeah, just that, that this I love this combination of colors up in the top uh, left hand corner mm. of the painting. Mm. It, that's really a beautiful combination of colors, mm. and I just it's really wonderful artwork, Patrick. Mm. Now, you. before we run out of time, can you tell mm. the audience about your exhibitions and the upcoming exhibitions you, that you've got on? Certainly. Tony. So um, one of my drawings was accepted into the Fisher's Ghost Art Award exhibition as a finalist. So the exhibition runs until the 10th of December. It's currently running. Uh, and it is showing, being shown at the Campbelltown Art Centre. And that's located at One Art Gallery Way, One Art Gallery Road, I believe. Correction there. Um, mm -hmm. Campbelltown, New South Wales. Campbelltown. So that's open, mm -hmm. Campbelltown, yeah. That's open Monday to Friday, 8.30am yeah. to 4.30pm. So you, uh, anyone can go and check that out. I think there are some COVID-19 restrictions, so you yes. might just want to um, check those. For the, yeah, check that out on there because there are definitely, um, you can look that up on the internet. Yeah. So, and then one of my other exhibitions is a group show, which I think you had the slide mm. for. I time. do. Yeah. It is just coming forward for you right now. Thank you. There we go. Yes, so this That's is... That's great. Um, that must mm. be exciting to have your works in um, an art gallery, Patrick. Yes, yes. Well, especially now that 
I haven't been able to exhibit all throughout the yes. Sydney lockdown period. So <laughs> bear that in mind. <laughs> yes. So it means that it's basically like having your shop closed for, you know, almost a year. And then yes. it finally we'll be able to exhibit. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so this Patrick, is the... Yes. Yeah, I'll let you tell us about the okay. um, exhibition first and then I've got some more questions for you. <laughs> sure, no worries. So I'm participating in this group ex art exhibition called Braemar Volunteers 2021. That will be shown from the 9th of December 2021 to the 16th of January 2022. Braemar Gallery, as we can see there, is open on Thursdays through to Sundays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I think it's closed on public holidays, but it might be open on mm. Boxing Day. But anyway, yeah. check that out online too. Um, you can you can search Braemar House or Braemar Gallery. Both should yes, be and you'll find um, it. Mm. And exhibitions are subject to COVID-19 restrictions at Braemar Gallery. Um, hmm. And then I've also proposed to exhibit a solo exhibition at Rex Livingston Art and Objects, and that's in Katoomba, New South Wales. It's a oh, gallery wow. that, that David Rex Livingston um, is the director of there, and that yes. will possibly be in 2022, but this is still in consultation with him. Yeah. Fantastic. Patrick, my question is, when you have um, a number of exhibitions of your works um, occurring simultaneously, do you actually attend so that the um, visitors can ask you questions or what happens? I've never actually asked an artist about that. Most of the artists I've talked to have either their own gallery so they're kind of there painting mm. in real time but you've got a number of exhibitions on and you can't physically be at all of them so what happens in that circumstance do you visit well, on certain days or how does it work well actually in the case of Braemar gallery um I'll be mm -hmm. there I'll be there for one entire day of every month because I volunteer yes. there so I'll be volunteering mm -hmm. during the Brahma Volunteers exhibition, but also most exhibitions held in commercial galleries or private galleries mm -hmm. um, will have mm -hmm. an art opening, an official art opening where people will be invited. Um, and actually, yes. anyone can attend those. People don't really understand this, but anyone can attend those art opening exhibitions and there'll be um, refreshments served, and you can chat to the artists and you can chat to the director, or in this case, Brahma House will possibly hold, I'm not sure, but they'll possibly hold a, an exhibition opening. Maybe, maybe not. Um, yes. But I do know at the exhibition at, for the Fisher's Ghost Art Award, um, they will be mm -hmm. holding a closing um, ceremony. Um, um, so in, on the 10th of December. So you can, yes. anyone can turn up to that, subject to COVID-19 restrictions. And um, I'll be definitely there. And so that's why I tend to, tend to turn up to the openings here generally, yeah. Good, good, good. Mm. Um, one of the other questions that I, I was interested, and please tell me if you're comfortable answering this. Mm -hmm. Having had my own extensive battles with um, anxiety and depression mm. and trying to navigate my way out the other side of that, I'm wondering mm. how important your art and creativity is in helping you heal that process. Well, actually, that's a very good question. I'm very happy to answer it, uh, Tony. And oh, thank it's very you. Simply, <laughs> it's very simply answered in that people say that art uh, is a really good mode of therapy, and it's true, um, because when I started working on my Neem series, I, I really didn't really have a, a definite idea of where my painting was going as opposed to my drawing. Yes. So I decided I would base a whole lot of artworks on my experiences in Neem in the south of France. And because of in, in one aspect, when I'm going through a psychosis or being affected, going through an episode, it, it's quite yes. stressful for myself. But then if you kind oh, of... Yeah. Divorce yourself from your experience 
and look at yourself going through all this it, it, from a, an observer's point of view it's 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 highly um uh, humorous in a sense in that um if you were to have this all played out it like in my next painting that i'm going to do for the neem series when i ever, ever get back to that series is going to be yes. titled the moonraker ambulance so if you can imagine an ambulance sort of tearing around the corner and me in a stretcher being flung to side to side yes. and <laughs> maybe yes. a poster with um a scene from moonraker yes. on there so it becomes quite kind of humorous and um, but in a good sense, in a in a in a kind of like a yeah 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 again, again I go back to abreaction. It's it's an abreaction or a cathartic experience. In if when you start painting these images, um, you get it out from yourself. You are able to express it, and you're able to talk about it with other people. And people will say, like you just did then. Oh, I've had a a, um, a mental health um, long term with, long yeah, term with, battle. Yeah. Exactly, with, with anxiety or depression or whatever it might be. And you'll find that you're not alone. Because I used to belong, belong yeah. to a local art group of one in five. And one in five people do suffer from some form of um, mental health problem. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the first time this happened to you, you weren't home. You were actually overseas in France, weren't you? Well, it, it, that was, that was um, the... That was quite a severe episode that I had then. Um, yeah. But I, it, something in the severity, again, was quite humorous. But I actually had a small episode in Canberra. And my uh. my best mate, just uh, he thought there was something wrong with me. So he called up my mother and she called me and she came and picked me up. We went to a doctor and he basically found out, said, mm. um, took me into the room and said, Patrick, you have schizophrenia. So that hit me like a yes. ton of bricks. But then, oh yeah, you kind of you kind of you kind of sort you kind of sort sort through things and compartmentalize things and digest things, and eventually, yes. you're able to work your way through it. Yes. And so these days, it barely affects me at all. You know, I might hear the occasional yeah. voice, um, or I yeah. might have a weird thought, but at the end yes. of the day, they affect my life. <laughs> It's it's really helpful to have a diagnosis because mm. before I had a diagnosis, I just thought I was bloody crazy, quite frankly. And mm. it actually enabled me to go, okay, no, there's a chemical imbalance in my brain and yep. it causes this, this, this and this. Okay, well, I can work with that. And, I, and I'm guessing that it's the same f for you. Okay, well, that's what's the problem. I can work with that. As long as you know that that's what the issue is, you can go, oh, okay, righto. And it's much easier to deal with than undiagnosed uh, mental illness is, is incredibly hard on everyone from yourself to your greater family and friends because not only do you not know what's going on, neither do, do they, but once you have a diagnosis and you can freely share and go, Oh, I'm having a rough one today. Um, just give me some space or whatever it needs. Yeah. Um, and I can see that your beautiful art pieces would be very instrumental in helping you deal. And it comes across in your artwork as a very beautiful presentation of what m might sit behind that mental illness it's really mm. really lovely um i like too that y as an artist you there's a diff number of different genres that you um create within uh, the the products you use are, are different and diverse and it mm. just produces this unique range of art collection that is uniquely patrick romus isn't it Mm, exactly. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. There are a few kind of strands to my artworks um, in terms of um, ongoing series. And, but to get back to a little bit to what you were saying before, in that is that, um, yeah. yeah, until you get diagnosed, it becomes, and some of it will take years to be diagnosed with a particular mental yes. health problem or issue. Um, but when, when you are able to be diagnosed, then you can start to work on that um, with your health professional, or in my case, a psychiatrist. Absolutely. And I see them uh, twice a year. So I think that's really valuable help. 
and it, mm. it means that you you have the tools at your disposal to combat this problem. Um, Correct. And if you can combat Whereas it, whereas before, become, yeah. But before sure. diagnosis, you don't have any tools. You don't have mm. anyone to help. You don't have anyone to explain what's going on inside of your mind and your brain. But once mm. you get to diagnosis, there are tools. There is help, and you begin to understand what's happening in your brain. And it's it, it is very liberating. I found. Mm. Um, and I went undiagnosed for the best part of 20, 25 years. So uh, <laughs> I was a long time in no man's land. So I'm really glad that you have that knowledge and help, Patrick, right now because um, the world would be sadly miss the level of your um, artistic expertise and we would be we would not have your beautiful drawings so it's a good thing to know um, Patrick just quickly before we run out of time where yep. can people buy your art because you are associated with an amazing site that has all of your artwork on it can you tell us about that yes so I have been I've been a member of Blue Thumb for yeah. about a, yeah, probably almost two years now. Um, mm -hmm. And so that address is bluethumb.com.au forward slash Patrick hyphen Romus. Uh, so that's spelled P A T R I C K hyphen H R O M A S. And if you go there, you'll see um, all, all of, of my stuff on sale. Yeah, all of my artworks on sale. And there, you can purchase them at very competitive prices. Um, oh, and that's they, wonderful! And you can actually see them in different frames. They have, a, they have an app there, or a way oh. that you can uh, change your frames if you want to, and order your frames with the artwork. Hmm. Fantastic. Patrick, we are just about out of time. I just want to particularly thank you for having the courage to come on live TV despite the challenges of tech that we had earlier in the show. Um, I'm delighted to have spent this time with you talking about your artwork and showcasing it to our audience. Um, don't forget, audience, I'd love you to jump on to bluefum.com.au uh, forward slash Patrick Romus and those links will also be attached to this video wherever you are watching and wherever you're re-watching it. Of course if you're on the live feeds now you will have that feeding into your chat stream just as we speak. Patrick thank you so much for being on Radio Tony Everyday Business. It's a pure delight to have the opportunity to talk to artists. We don't get enough on the show and of course your business is art. Your business is painting, your business yes. is drawing, your business is creating and we want to showcase all sorts of businesses on this show and I'm incredibly grateful that you agreed to come on the show today. Patrick Romus, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very grateful to speak to you today. Tony, it, is, it has been a delight. Have a wonderful day. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here. That, my audience, is your lot for this week. We will be back next week with Everyday Business. Please thank Patrick and for sure go and check out his upcoming uh, exhibitions and his artwork online. Patrick Romus, thank you so much. That's your lot for this week. Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Bye.